them. Nathan, Hannah, if you could stand uh, along with your children, Grace, Mary, and Gideon. Uh, we welcome them today. It's good to have you in our midst. Thank you for coming to be a part of our family. And you'll note that we have a special welcome uh, a gift card shower that's located in the bulletin. If you turn a few pages in, which uh, showing as our appreciation and thankfulness for their, uh, their coming to Sheboygan with us. We will also install uh, our other teachers and recognize uh, Jenna Rayski and Ter Teresa Duffy for milestones in their years of service to the church. I would invite uh, Mrs. Lois Etherton forward to say a few words about Sunday school. Good morning. Sunday school classes for the new school year begin in two weeks from now on Sunday, September 11th, and classes are from 9.30 to 10.30. You're welcome to join anytime. Sunday school is an opportunity for age-specific instruction in God's Word. We have classes available for people from age three through adult. And so just check your bulletin to see where each class meets and the topics that they will study. If you've been a part of our Sunday morning education hour in the past, I invite you to join us again and invite a friend to come with you. And if you haven't been a part of it in the past, I encourage you to make God's word a priority for your family by committing to attend on a regular basis. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. With you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are here. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
and mercy, teach us by your Holy Spirit to follow the example of your Son in true humility, that we may withstand the temptations of the devil, and with pure hearts and minds avoid ungodly pride. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading for the 12th Sunday after Pentecost is from Proverbs chapter 25. It is the glory of God to conceal things, but the glory of kings is to search things out. As the heavens for height and the earth for depth, so the heart of the king is unsearchable. Take away the dross from the silver, and the smith has material for a vessel. Take away the wicked from the presence of the king, and his throne will be established in righteousness. Do not put yourself forward in the king's presence, or stand in the place of the great. For it is better to be told, come up here, than to be put lower in the presence of a noble. What have your eyes seen? Do not hastily bring into court. For what will you do in the end when your neighbor puts you to shame? Argue your case with your neighbor himself, and do not reveal another secret, lest he who hears you bring shame upon you, and your ill repute have no end. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Hebrews chapter 13. Let brotherly love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Remember those who are in prison, as though in prison with them, and those who are mistreated, since you are also in the body. Let marriage be held in honor among all, and let the marriage bed be undefiled, for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. Keep your life free from love of money, and be content with what you have. For he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke to you the word of God. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do not be led away by diverse and strange teachings, for it is good for the heart to be strengthened by grace, not by foods, which have not benefited those devoted to them. We have an altar from which those who serve the tent have no right to eat, for the bodies of those animals whose blood is brought into holy places by the high priest as a sacrifice for sin 
are burned outside the camp. So Jesus also suffered outside the gate in order to sanctify the people through his own blood. Therefore let us go to him outside the camp and bear the reproach he endured. For here we have no lasting city. We seek the city that is to come. Through him, then, let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they are keeping watch over your souls as those who will have to give an account. Let them do this with joy, not with groaning, for that would be of no advantage to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. Luke, the 14th chapter. Glory One Sabbath, when Jesus went to dine at the house of a ruler of the Pharisees, they were watching him carefully. And behold, there was a man before him who had dropsy. And Jesus responded to the lawyers and Pharisees, saying, Is it lawful to heal in the Sabbath or not? But they remained silent. Then he took him and healed him and sent him away. And he said to them, which of you, having a son or an ox that has fallen into a well on a Sabbath day, will not immediately pull him out? And they could not reply to these things. Now he told a parable to those who were invited, when he noticed how they chose the places of honor, saying to them, when you are invited by someone to a wedding feast, do not sit in a place of honor, lest someone more distinguished than you be invited by him. And he who invited you both will come and say to you, give your place to this person, and then you will begin with shame to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit in the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at table with you. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. He said also to the man who invited him, When you give a dinner or a banquet, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors, lest they also invite you in return and you be repaid. But when you give a feast, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed, because they cannot repay you. You will be repaid at the resurrection of the just. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord.
text for this morning's sermon is taken from the gospel lesson with special emphasis on the following words of Jesus. Everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. This is our text. You may be seated. Dear brothers and sisters of our Lord Jesus Christ, cultures are groups of people who hold similar beliefs and values. Today, we hear how Jesus reveals some aspects of the uplifting culture of the kingdom of God. It's about healing, humility, and hospitality to the, quote, undeserving. This is in direct conflict with the lawyers and Pharisees spoken of in our text, theirs is a cancel culture that has to do with helping yourself, often at the expense of others, arrogance, and giving only to the so-called deserving among us who can return the favor. By coming to church today, and you have come to church, by the way, church is where we gather in the Lord's name to hear his word and to celebrate his sacrament. It is distinctive when, from our other groups of meeting because worship is distinctive. God himself in Jesus Christ comes into our midst to serve us these gifts. He's his gifts. He's here. And that's what we acknowledge that's why even though we're outside, there's an order to this, isn't there? You just came before the Lord of heaven and earth, and what did he do? He forgave your sins. You know why? Because you've come to his church. You've come to a different culture. It's far different. Opposite of the culture of the world. You have entered the healing humble, and hospitable kingdom culture of the kingdom of God. Now, the culture of the church is shaped and formed by the healing balm of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, balm, you're probably like, what's that? B-A-L-M, right? What's balm? You ever put on lip balm? Yeah? My wife does all the time. She can't live without the Carmex, right? <laughs> what does it do? It brings healing. Well, that's what the gospel of Jesus Christ does. It brings healing. It soothes the wounds inflicted by those who, like the lawyers and Pharisees of our text, live by the gotcha culture of this world. You see, in our text, the Pharisees were seeking to destroy Jesus' credibility. Did you notice how it says they were watching him carefully? They wanted to destroy his credibility with the people they served. And so they had this big thing about not doing anything on the Sabbath. And Jesus knows what they're thinking, you know, because Jesus is Lord, so he challenges uh, them on their understanding of the Sabbath. He said, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? And you know what they said? Nothing. Because they had no convictions. They said nothing. Because they wanted him to say something and then get him as a result. Right? So what does he do? He heals the man on the Sabbath day who is suffering from something called dropsy. Now that's maybe something you're not familiar with, but it, in our day and age we call it edema. And that's when someone kind of fills up with fluids so much so that their skin begins to break open, right? It's a, a very difficult disease to deal with. In fact, I know several of our members who have to deal with edema, and then, you know, the skin breaks open, and they have to put salve on it to keep it from being infected, and, and all of the rest. Well, Jesus, and, and by the way, the Pharisees said, well, these people are, 
are undeserving. They're unclean. They must have done something wrong here. So we don't want anything to do with them. So what does Jesus do? He heals the man. He heals him. Wow. Now, before we get too hard on the lawyers and the Pharisees, they just like the marketing. Ever played gotcha with someone? Maybe in a someone you, you don't know, and so it's a lot easier to maybe hold them more accountable than yourself. Ever played gotcha with an acquaintance? Now how about gotcha with a loved one? Because you're so hurt by something that happened that you just want to get it back, right? This is a problem for us, for all of us, because it's our go-to way ever since the fall. It's our default way of dealing with things. We try and show ourselves to be, quote, better than others. All we got news for you. We're not. I'm not. And Jesus exposes that among us today, not for the purpose of a gotcha moment, but for the purpose of changing things for us. And notice what he, he says in another place. That man was not made for the Sabbath. You weren't made for the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made for man. The Sabbath was made for you. And he shows this to the uh, those Pharisees by saying this, hey, if your kid falls in a well or an ox falls in the well, aren't you going to immediately pull it out? Well, of course they would. Even if it's the Sabbath day, of course they will. But did you notice what they, how they respond to Jesus? They said, nothing. Because they have no convictions. They just want to convict other people. Right? Wow. Now, the Sabbath is made for you. It's a place where the great position of both body and soul comes to restore your relationship with him and each other. He does this through the forgiveness of sins. This is the big thing of the church. We are just the delivery guys. Our Lord authorizes us to stand here and say this, to deliver his goods, the forgiveness of sin, to set you free from your sin and death. And for us ourselves to be set free on this Sabbath from our sin and death. That's what this place is about. It's about healing. And there's only healing through, there's only reconciliation through forgiveness. Back to that understanding of balm again. Right? Any, anybody ever use Neosporin? Oh, yeah. yeah. I could do too. You must have had a cut. Yeah. Oh, right there. Yeah. <laughs> so what does Neosporin do? Well, one of the things, like, I, I looked it up, actually. I kind of knew what it did, but I looked it up just to make sure there wasn't something else. And the one thing it does is it moistens the wound. It keeps it from getting hard. I better check with Dr. Kostoviak over here. But it says, that's what it says on the directions. And then it, it, takes, it keeps it from be, becoming infected. It takes the infection away. Well, the healing salve, the healing ah of the gospel of Jesus Christ, you know what it does? It softens our hard hearts. To the point that we can even, if we're listening and hearing, if our minds and hearts and lives are being shaped by the love of God and Jesus Christ, it means we can even love our enemies and do good to those who hurt us. Wow. That's amazing, isn't it? That's amazing. So are you tired of the gotcha culture? Whether it be online or in your everyday life, are you tired of it? Well, I got good news for you. Jesus comes today with healing. The culture of the church also consists of those who humble themselves before God and others. It is countercultural to the world because it stands in stark culture or stark contrast to those who, like the lawyers and Pharisees of our text, arrogantly exalt themselves over others. And Jesus noticed that, didn't he? He noticed that they chose the places of honor. And he knows that we do too. That we think really highly of ourselves. And mistakenly so. And that's why he teaches, like, hey, don't do that, because the host is going to come and say to you, hey, take a take the lowest seat, and let me give the good seat, the prime seat, to someone else. 
right? Don't do that. Take the lowest seat he says. And when the host comes, he'll say, friend, come higher, and you'll be honored before everyone. And then he says what? Those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Didn't Jesus humble himself by eating? Even by taking on our flesh and blood, he did. And then not only that, he humbles himself even more by taking our sin and death into himself and dying for it. But he rose victorious over it. And now he's exalted, isn't he? He's got the name that is above every name, that, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of who? To the glory of God the Father. He says to you, friend, come up for a better seat. But you know what the seat is? It's his. He gives you his seat. Everything that belongs to him now belongs to you and me. This is what's going on here. This is what our Lord comes down to do. He humbles himself to exalt you. This culture where God himself and Christ humbles himself before us, and in turn we humble ourselves before him and others, it's... It's really important for our world, isn't it? Now, just as an aside, parents, I want to let you know that your pastors and your teachers are here to work with you, not against you. You authorize us to teach your children and to shape and form them with the love of God and Jesus Christ. We're working together with you and we need to be totally transparent about that, and are. And if we fail, you need to call us on it. Because we're here to work together. That's not what's going on in the culture, is it? We're here to humbly serve you, and we only get this right because we don't get it right all the time either, so you have to call it us on it when we don't, and we can repent just like everybody else, and again, Go with, with the way of the culture of the Lord's church, humbly, bringing his gifts into people's hearts and lives. You see, Jesus comes today with healing, and he comes not to be served, but to serve. And he shapes and forms our culture so that we're here to do the same thing, to bring healing to one another by reconciling with each other, and by serving each other the gifts that God has served us. And finally, better keep it going because we're hoping it doesn't rain. If it doesn't rain, I'll take credit for that. If it does, someone else made the decision. The culture of the church is hospitable in its dealing with others. In this culture, Jesus himself is the host of the feast feast that creates and sustains a community. And this is a community of grace, mercy, and peace. And notice what we hear. He invites to this feast the poor, the crippled, the blind, the lame, along with all those who have nothing to offer him except this, their sin and death. That's all we have to offer him, the one who is it all, our sin and death. Notice that Jesus doesn't invite the rich and famous and those who believe in themselves, who deny their things, their sins and think they're better than someone else. He doesn't invite them. He invites those who know who they are and where their life and forgiveness and peace come from. It's from Jesus Christ. And we can never, ever, ever, ever repay him. That's why it's so important for you to be immersed in this culture of the church. This differs strikingly, uh, strikingly from the host in the dinner of our text, who invites only those who can return the favor. He invites, invites only those who can do something for him or give something to him. That's not what we're about here. Jesus' hospitality is about bringing us poor, miserable sinners into the kingdom of God, into the culture of his grace, mercy, and healing. It's all about mercy, and in that word hospitality, there's hospice. There's mercy. So in the words of the hymn writer, Jesus comes today with healing, 
knocking at your door, appealing, offering pardon, grace, and peace. And you, with nothing except your sin and death, respond this way, and you'll have opportunity to respond exactly in this way. On my tongue, his pledge re receiving, I accept his grace, believing that I taste his love divine. Now, now have I found consolation, comfort in my tribulation, balm to heal the troubled soul. God, my shield from every terror, cleanses me from sin and error, makes my wounded spirit whole. This is the healing, humble, and hospitable, hospitable culture of the kingdom of God. Welcome. Amen. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding guard our hearts and our lives in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Would the entire faculty and staff of Trinity come forward, kind of put... We'll put Nathan in the in the front here. By the way, I put this staff up against anybody's anywhere. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Beloved in the Lord, according to the usual order, Nathan Wingfield has been called to the office of teacher at Trinity Lutheran Church. This office has been established and loved by the church to support the office of the ministry and to assist and strengthen Christian fathers and mothers in their God-given responsibility to bring their children up in the nurture and instruction of the Lord. Nathan has been prepared for this office by prayer and study. He has been examined and declared ready to undertake this sacred responsibility in public trust. Hear the word of God concerning this office. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which you indeed were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly and in teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Nathan, do you believe and confess the canonical books of the Old and New Testaments to be the inspired word of God and the only infallible rule of faith and practice? Do you accept the three ecumenical creeds, namely the Apostles, the Nicene, and the Athanasian creeds as faithful testimonies to the truth of the Holy Scriptures, and do you reject all the errors which they condemn? Yes, I believe and confess the three ecumenical creeds because they are in accord with the Word of God. I also reject the errors they condemn. Do you believe that the unaltered Augsburg Confession is a true exposition of the Word of God and a correct exhibition of the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church? that the Apology of the Augsburg Confession, the small and large catechisms of Martin Luther, the small called articles, the treaties on the authority and primacy of the Pope, and the formula of Concord, as these are contained in the Book of Concord, are also in agreement with this one scriptural faith. Yes, I make these confessions my own, because they are in accord with the Word of God. Do you solemnly pr promise faithfully to serve God's people and the teaching ministry in accordance with the Word of God, the ecumenical creeds, and the confessions or symbols of the church? Yes, I promise with the help of God. Will you, trusting in God's care, seek to grow in love for those you serve, strive for excellence in your skills, and adorn the gospel of Jesus Christ with a godly life? Yes, I promise with the help of God. Brothers and sisters in Christ, you have heard the confession and solemn promise of Nathan, who has been called to serve in the church in this congregation. I ask you now, in the presence of God, will you receive him, show him fitting love and honor, and support him by your gifts and fervent prayer? If so, answer, we will with the help of God. We will with the help of God. 
The Almighty and most merciful God strengthen and assist you always. Nathan, are you ready to assume the work of this ministry? Nathan Wingfield, I install you as teacher of Trinity Lutheran Church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome to Trinity. Now on for the placement of the rest of us, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, you have come to be placed into service at Trinity for the 2022-2023 school year, a work in which our Father in Heaven has great joy. You are to assist the ministry of word and sacraments by instructing God's children according to his holy word and serving this congregation in your given vocation. You are to prepare yourselves for this work by your individual and corporate study of the word of God and the faith drawn from it as it has been delivered to us in the creeds and confessions of the Evangelical Lutheran Church. While holiness of life and work is the way of all who trust in Christ, it is especially important that you show yourselves by word and example to be patterns of good works and Christian devotion. In the presence of God and of this congregation, I therefore ask you, do you accept the offices entrusted to you? And do you promise faithfully to carry out your duties, trusting in him and conforming yourself to his word in accordance with the faith of the evangelical Lutheran church? If so, answer, I do. I do. I place you into service of Trinity Lutheran Church for the 2022-2023 school year in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Finally, we have a few recognitions. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, with gratitude, gratitude and joy, we give thanks this day for Dr. Jenna Grayski on the uh, occasion of her 10th anniversary in this ministry, and for Teresa Duffy on her fifth anniversary in this teaching ministry. We praise the Lord that he has permitted them to serve his church faithfully, and that he has sustained and supported them and blessed their service among, them, among us. Let us hear the word of the Lord. I thank my God and all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, for you all making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. It is right to feel this way about you all, because I hold you in my heart, for you are all partakers with me of grace, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness how I yearn for you all with the affection of Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Gracious Father, through your holy apostle, you direct your people to use the gifts they have received and to serve others with the strength that you provide. We give thanks to you for the faithful servants, servants of Jenna and Teresa in the teaching ministry and for all our faculty and staff. Bless them with wisdom and patience and with love and faithfulness to your word that with gladness they may continue to serve your people on the way to life everlasting. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace and joy, the Almighty and Merciful Father, the Son, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bless and strengthen you for continued faithful service in his name. Amen. You may return to your places, and would everybody please stand for the prayer of the church. Let us pray. Bye. Heavenly Father, through the humiliation of your Son, you called us to place at your heavenly table. Teach us to treasure this place of honor, and so to spurn foolish honors of this world. Lord, in your mercy. Our Lord God, our shepherds, sustained pastors, teachers, and all those who work in the church, as we begin a new school year, grant your blessing to them and to the parents and students who trust in their care. Lord, in your mercy. Our oh, Lord our God, at the creation of Adam and Eve, you instituted and blessed marriage as a lifelong union of a man and a woman. You commanded that it be held in honor by all as a sacred sign of Christ and his bride, the church. Grant your blessing, therefore, to all husbands and wives, including... Andy and Ruth Herring, and Howard and Sue Yench, who celebrate their 50th wedding anniversary. Lord, in your mercy. God of justice, you exalt the humble and humble the proud You and your appointed time. We commend to you the elected officials of our land. Grant them the desire to govern as those serving 
and give them wisdom and courage to know what is right and follow it. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. O Lord, grant peace and healing according to your will to the sick, the suffering, those grieving the loss of loved ones, those suffering depression, and those with chronic illness and pain, especially the victims of war in Ukraine, including family members of Anna Pomarenko, Mark in long-term rehabilitation, Tom dealing with ongoing health issues, David recovering home after a fall, Megan Yurk, Carol receiving after recovering after breaking her leg and wrist, Renee recovering after major surgery, Richard recovering after knee surgery, Steve in hospice care at home, Deborah for continued management of her illness, for Cora Lee, Benjamin, Bernadette, Sue, Jennifer, Sharon, Judy, William, Doris, Lloyd, Timothy, and Laura, all in treatment for cancer. For Dorothy and Caroline in hospice care, and for the family of Eileen Meyer, Lord in your mercy. Remembering that we here have no abiding city, but that heaven is our home, give us your aid that we may be that we may by true faith and godly life prepare for the coming of our Savior, multiplying your mercy by loving our neighbor in need, and loving you with all our body, soul, strength, and will. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. As we gather together the offering. Stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and and it is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh, and laid on him our sin, giving him into death, that we might not die eternally. Because he has now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death 
and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying... and given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take ye, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Take an E, the body of Christ.
Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in body and soul, the life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Amen. <laughs> to Almighty God that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. should do is kind of get some tables and stuff in here so it's just raining a little bit we can have you know um, lunch here under here and under that other one is there anybody over there who wants any instructions for us to give anyone in the back hey, no, no, no. Joe oh just the man I'm looking for here you go hey pastor and good morning everybody thanks for coming to the Trinity Lutheran Church at School picnic I'll emphasize that because again last year we were Pleased to be joined by a number of our St. Paul's colleagues who made their way over from the other picnic. So this is the Trinity picnic. You're welcome to join us and stay with us. Membership applications are by the table and by the food as well. So uh, Heather and I and the Lifeboat family were pleased to put things together again today for the picnic, but we really had a lot of help and we want to thank everybody, all the volunteers, and thank all of you especially for being here today. The forecast looks like we maybe got about an hour before things really get um, get going. So there's lots of food that you can enjoy. Brats, burgers, potato salad, beans, all the good picnic stuff. There you're asked to seriously consider uh, a free will donation to help cover those costs. Some of those items were donated, but 
Uh, part of them we're paying for, so if you can help us by making a cash donation, that'll help us cover the costs of the of the picnic food. The eighth graders are selling sweets, and they've got a lot of them, and they were getting nervous as the rain was coming. So for a dollar, you could go home with a bag of cookies and cupcakes, and all that money goes to the eighth graders to help with their eighth grade trip. So let's not have them take any sweet treats home with them. Everybody should be able to kick in a buck or two to get some sweets and, and make sure that all that food is taken and they get some money for their class trip. They're also selling soda and slushies for a dollar. Uh, each student should have gotten a free slushy coupon at school. So you can turn in that coupon or that flyer. If not, we'll trust you. Um, you get one free slushy, and then after that, we ask you to consider a dollar for the slushies. Um, we want to thank a couple of people this morning. We've got the uh, grillers. Tom Yurk, Craig Kaiser, and Todd Decker have been down here since about 6 o'clock this morning grilling. So let's uh, make sure we give them a round of applause. The Sheboygan Fire Department was down here early to fill the dump tank, and uh, hopefully that's going to be... I mean, what do Pastor Matt Berg, Mr. Um, our new teacher, Wingfeld, thank you, I'm sorry, Mr. Wingfeld, and Mrs. Racy, what have you got to lose? You're either going to get wet in the rain or in the dump tank. So uh, the dump tank's going forward, right, Pastors? <laughs> uh, <laughs> we want to thank... Uh, John Powers uh, for allowing us to be down here and kind of connecting with him with the beer garden. The beer garden is open and uh, take advantage of that for some great beer and wine and a gift uh, from the Powers are most likely be coming to Trinity on behalf of a part of their sales there. So make sure you help out there. And then I don't know if the concert is planned. Uh, John Jordan. Yeah. They're ready to go. All right. So we've got the Sheboygan Pops Band that's going to be entertaining us as soon as possible, I'm assuming, or at one o'clock, there you go. So again, hopefully, uh, I'm sure they'll seek shelter under the shelter here. And they've got a great hour worth of entertainment through the wonderful talents of the Sheboygan Pops Band. We have games planned, we'll see how they go. So we've got a fishing game, we've got tug of war, we've got hula hooping, egg throw, bean bags. We'll just make it work as best we can. If you wanna play bean bags, you need to let my brother Pete know He's going to set up a bracket, and then we've got a gift card for the winning team, a quick trip gift card for the winning team of the beanbag. So let's make it the best great afternoon we can have. God bless us in so many ways here at Trinity, and enjoy your afternoon.